Essentially, I think the term e-bike needs to be disbanded with. All of this form of thinking does is exclude people who could be using these trail networks correctly, but not only because they have an electric motor. And simply saying, oh, it has electronics, you can't use it, is no longer a valid argument. <laughs> rise of SL e-bikes, I think it's time that we kind of come back to what are e-bikes and where do they kind of fit into the greater cycling ecosystem. Um, lots of places still do not allow e-bikes to ride. Some of my favorite places, Jackson Hole, the greater Jackson Hole area, you can't ride e-bikes on mountain bike trails. In Moab, many of the trails are still locked that you cannot ride e-bikes. And I wanted to kind of go over why is that reframe the conversation around e-bikes. And I think it mostly stems around the term e-bike. Some people treat e-bikes as if it's simply just a slightly more powerful bicycle that just is easier to ride. And some people treat it like it's a Honda 450. If we want cycling to grow, we need to have a more nuanced conversation about this in order to continue to invite more people to come into cycling. The term e-bike is just strange in general. I mean, it's a super broad term. It basically, all it means is it's a two-wheel vehicle that has an electric motor. It doesn't say anything about how that electric motor is contributing to the propulsion of um, the two-wheel vehicle or in what is the interface of that, whether it's pedal-assisted or throttle-controlled. Because e-bike technically under that umbrella is both types. Um, this is different from other forms of tool transportation. Motorcycles, we instantly know what it is. It's a throttle-controlled, um, engine-propelled vehicle. Whereas with bicycles, it's a pedal-propelled, human-powered vehicle. E-bikes also can fall into both of those categories. It can be 100% motor-propelled, or it can be um, pedal assisted and just be a force multiplier just like if you had a gearbox it's simply a force multiplier um, and this is where different classifications of e-bikes become paramount 26 states have adopted the three tiered classifications that designate e-bikes as either class one class two or class three and e-bikes span a very wide gap between those three they look very very different the main distinction in these tiers um, is mostly by speed, but also by interface. For instance, class one e-bikes have a top speed of 20 miles per hour, have an electric motor, but they are pedal assist only. There is no way that the motor can move the vehicle unless you are pedaling. Class two e-bikes are equipped with a throttle actuator, but they are also governed and limited to the motor helping you at 20 miles an hour. You can still go faster than 20 miles an hour, obviously, but the motor will not be assisting you. On class three e-bikes is a bicycle with a motor that provides either pedal assist, can also have a throttle, but can reach up to 28 miles an hour. Um, anything over 28 miles an hour is considered an electric motorcycle. Whether it has pedal assist or not, it's considered an electric motorcycle. Uh, class 3s have by far the most restrictions and classifications. In some states, you actually have to have like a permit or a driver's license in order to even use them. Um, in my opinion, though, as we use these class systems, the main thing that people focus on is the speed. And that kind of is the major flaw of this class system and calling it an e-bike. When someone says e-bike, what you mainly think is faster. You don't think about anything else about the e-bike. It's, oh, it's faster. Just instantly, that's what you think about. And I understand why, but because it's the easiest to like see, like, oh, that person's going faster, right? It's led to it's led to consumers, lawmakers, and businesses to kind of create products and regulate e-bikes based off of speed. And the reason why this is so important is because people who are over recreational areas or are making new trails. All they are concerned about is the speed of the vehicle. And so they, for the most part, they've just banned e-bikes in general instead of taking a nuanced approach about what e-bikes should be allowed. All of this form of thinking does is exclude people who could be using these trail networks correctly, but not only because they have an electric motor. And simply saying, oh, it has electronics, you can't use it, is no longer a valid argument because of the rise of electronic drivetrains and shifters. All high-end bikes have electronic components on them at this point. And now the only difference being is one is still completely human-powered and one simply has a force multiplier. I think we can all agree we don't want electric motorcycles on mountain bike trails. It's very easy to understand why that is. Pedal-assist mountain bikes, especially SL bikes, 
don't increase the speed all that much. The difference between climbing at three miles an hour and 10 miles an hour on a mountain bike trail is all not that is really not that big of a difference, especially when you consider that descending speeds are identical between e-bikes and non-e-bikes. They're literally the same. The same cannot be said though for throttle controlled bikes, which makes sense why we wouldn't allow those forms of bikes on more mountain bike specific regulation trails. Now going back to where we started and the rise of SL bikes and their popularity has mostly arisen is not because people want to ride faster. They want to ride with less effort. If they wanted a motorcycle, they would go get a motorcycle. They're about the same price right now. Now, why does this matter? Again, as we've talked about, most um, places who ban e-bikes do not see the distinction between class one, class two, and class three e-bikes. It's just no e-bikes whatsoever. And in essence, this is throwing out pedal assist bikes out with the rest of e-bikes. So how can we change and what do we need to do? Essentially, I think the term e-bike needs to be disbanded with. We're, we've come to a point now where we need to really focus on these classifications. Are they, is it a pedal assist bike or is it a throttle controlled bike? The difference between that is the most important difference, not so much that it has an electric component to it or not. And as we can disseminate that information more clearly, I think both consumers and lawmakers will be able to understand and be able to properly permit the proper kinds of bikes into the areas that are more properly aligned to how they're supposed to be used. And if we can do this, all we're going to do is invite more people to join mountain biking, more people to enjoy cycling, and the industry is just going to grow, which I think for all of us is a beneficial one.